Now, try to ignore what's in the background. That's a subject for another day. Waiting parts on the slow boat from China. Whilst waiting for that then, I thought I'd have a go at converting one of these mini little gliders. Inspired by Nick Chitty's conversion, I'm going to make my own take on that. As always, links to everything down in the video description. Rather than just have it as a picture on slope Sora, I thought I'd have a little propeller and flying in the face of convention, I'm going to put that on the back. The little speed controller that uh, is running it has no beck and it's a 2S only capable speed controller. Therefore, I've made up a little beck of my own using little circuit boards that I like. That's going to be mated to a little two cell pack, a little Geoneg or however it's pronounced, 2S high volt pack. The receiver of choice, the smallest ELRS PWM receiver that I have is this little Matek guy. To finish it off, a couple of servos for the Picherons, a little 3.7 gram Nick also used. Another thing that uh, Nick recommended was the uh, ubiquitous Bic Medium Biro tube, and that coupled with a bit of carbon tube that I've found out of my scrap box is going to make the picture on mechanism. Enough waffling then, let's get on and start the build. I've cut the tubes and just laid them out here roughly to mark things out. So there are two pieces at 35 millimeters and two pieces about 10 that will go into the center portion. To mark out the line, all I did was to put my square on the edge of the back of the wing there and drew a line down so that those will be my cut lines. 40 millimeters back from the trailing edge is where the C of G is and 60 millimeters back more or less is where the holes are going to be for the tubes. That point is dictated by the thickest portion of the wing there which we should be able to see hopefully when we've cut the thing in half which is what I'm going to do next. The die is cast then, made the cuts and just indicated where I'm going to draw the hole through for the center piece here. As Nick has already divined the portion where we're going to put the bit of the Bic tube has a little piece either side so we will gently open that hole out having first used the sharpened tube and a drill to make the hole all the way through. That's the plan anyway. Time has come now then, having drilled the holes and put in the little big liners, I've temporarily taped the wing back together. I didn't show you before, but what I've done is with a little triangular file, just put some points on the end of the carbon tube there, almost like a boring bit. And we'll see how that works out. And I've put a piece of tape on here, so that will go through the centre section and then into the wing and give us our depth to put in the other piece of tube. Let's see how we get on. And again, as Nick suggested, we'll reverse the drill just to see if we can get any of the crud out of the hole. Let's see how that's worked out. That looks pretty good to me. I'll get a, another tool and open that hole out, put our little bits of Bic tube in there and then we'll move on. Our Pitcher on mechanism then is in place and that's all moving freely, all good news. We can now move on to the rest of the build. Now my glider appears to be slightly different to uh, the one in Nick's video. This front piece is in fact plastic and not foam and there are no ball bearings in there to give it weight. It appears that they've just used a a liberal amount of uh, hot snot, if you will. Once I've cleaned that out, I'll lay out the components and see 
where we are with respect to the COG. Here's my simple check for placing the components and making sure that the C of G is not too far out of kilter. And I know I don't have the cover on, but neither is the motor right to the back. So more or less we should be there or thereabouts. Time to get hacking some foam then. When I said I was going to hack some foam, I bet you didn't think I was going to cut the thing almost in half, but this is something that I did uh, with my full-size little conversion a while ago, and it worked out really well. Although in this case I'm not going to be putting in any reinforcement tubes, although I may live to regret that, uh, at least it gives me access to be able to make channels for the, the motor wire and uh, everything else very neat, and then just stick the bottom back on with the ubiquitous yuhu paw. I'm also going to be using another one of my inventions. I've 3D printed a Dremel-like uh, router router, which country are we in, which will make making the channels hopefully an awful lot easier. more or less like that. Now this is pretty flexible, so maybe I'll find a bit of 3mm uh, or 2mm carbon to go in there. But once that's done, with that glued back in place, nobody will ever know. A quick update then on where we are at. Having dug my channel, I did find a piece of 3mm, I think, carbon, which has stiffened that up, and that's all been glued back in with the wires, which you see now are exiting the front there, along with the servo wires. I've elected to change the antenna from the T to this base-loaded type, and cut out a hole there, so my receiver's going to go in there somewhere, and the antenna picking out the top. Obviously we have our two servo connections there, and this is the wire from the speed controller. I removed the other one as we have a common ground anyway. Speaking of speed controllers, I've just poked it in the spare hole at the top there, uh, so that'll have plenty of cooling. I 3D printed and then epoxied a motor mount on there for the little motor, which, for those who are curious, is a 1410 4000 kV. I chose the propeller by the extremely scientific method of, well, that looks pretty. I've yet to glue the center section in. The servos are obviously glued in. I've opened out the hole in the end there for a bit of wire, which I found, which already has a bend in one end. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this is. It's just over a millimeter. I'm going to bend up the linkages for that. I discovered that for some spooky reason my battery is quite a snug fit in the top of the canopy there. I have yet to work out how to attach the canopy. My idea is to stick some thin pieces on there and cut slots for them to go in there and maybe a locating peg just in the front made out of a cocktail stick or something. The original loom is a bit too big for this build, so I'm going to make up another one to connect to the to the battery connections there. And for those of you who are curious as to what was lurking under the blue heat shrink, this is my little regulator of choice. Now this doesn't have Beck written on it, and therefore it's about a quarter of the price. Links, as I say, down in the description. Last but not least, who knew that these q-tips or whatever they're called in your region are actually hollow so that's going to make a little tube which i can put on the leading edge of the wing to attach the servo to no i haven't been cleaning my ears out with that that's the residue of my laser cutter more work to get on with then we'll catch up when i've done those jobs i've finished the build now i've Copied, obviously, Nick's little linkage there for the picture-ons. And it's very basic, just 
three bends there and you have a little bit of latitude by bending up and down to be able to uh, adjust the wing position there. As an aside, I forgot to mention earlier the way that I made the, the holes through not only the fuselage there, but also to pass the motor wires through there and again there. This is a very handy addition to your toolkit. Uh, obviously a, a heated wire cutter and it has the, the tip. I don't know whether it's by design or by accident, but it's flattened off there. So it makes it easy to start off a cut. And if you're going to get one of these, get one with the variable control there so that you can set the heat. It gives you much greater control over your cutting. That to one side then. Welcome to HTX. Yes, to, uh, to pair with a mini glider, let's have a mini transmitter. I've uh, bitten the bullet and got one of these little pocket radios. I'm going to try that out. What has it got in its pockets? Anyway, I digress. As we saw before, the battery is clipped under there and I can poke the balance lead down that side and the power lead down that side. And I've just cut a bit of old credit card that's going to clip in to the canopy there. As I say, we'll poke that up there. Get that down in the gap, push that down. That fits nice and snug. And the added benefit is that uh, in the inevitable crash, it should, in theory, just, just pop off. Looking at our controls then, I always pretend to be the pilot and uh, look at it from the pilot's view. Looking first at the elevator function of the picture on, if you will. The difference here is that down is down and up is up. It's the reverse that it would be for a true elevator. However, the aileron function is the same. So stick right, the right hand starboard wing will go up. Now you'll see I've got ridiculous amounts of throws on there at the moment. So I've programmed up a couple of switches on the pocket. I can go to 50% aileron or 25% aileron. Still 100% elevator, but similarly on the elevator with the switch here. I've never flown a picture on, but they say that uh, you should have more elevator throw than aileron throw or roll. So I should probably leave that at those sorts of settings. And finally, Now there's not a massive amount of power there, but the idea here is that I want to try slope soaring, but I don't want to have to walk down to the bottom of the hill every time to recover the model. I'd rather be able to power it back up. So as long as it gets me back up the hill, I'm a happy bunny. As I also mentioned before, I've poked the little speed controller in there in the air. And believe it or not, this is running BL Heli, so I might even be able to get in there and and tweak some of those settings and see if I can get a bit more power out of the motor, it being a very high KV. With all that waffling out the way then, as always, we're waiting for a reasonable day. And unfortunately, recently we have not had <laughs> any reasonable days. In fact, it's been blowing a gale for pretty much the whole of, well, certainly for the whole of March, if not for the last three weeks. Hopefully then tomorrow things will calm down and we'll be able to give it a flit. So many firsts here today then. Maiden flight of the little mini picture on. First time with the Radio Master Pocket. A new location. And don't be worried. This guy came in at 113 grams. So there's no fear of any problems with the fun police. And of course last but not least first time chucking something off a slope so i found this uh, little slope here i'm assured by tom el presidente of the club and uh, a slope saw for many years that uh, with this little thing i wouldn't need very much of a slope there's a breeze coming directly towards me now probably about 10 to 12 kilometers an hour. 
I guess it's time to uh, see what happens. Well, that went better than expected. Come back this way. Come back this way, little picture on. Okay, let's cut the motor. And I'm sloping. Let's have some more motor. Oops! <laughs> Down she goes. Oh dear, oh dear. Don't know if that's in frame, but as intended, the uh, the front has popped off and hopefully saved the battery. But I have lost the edge of the tailplane there. That's a shame. Yeah, it's just clipped the end off there. Now we've all seen B-17s and other planes coming back with half the tailplanes missing, so uh, let's just give it another chuck whilst we're here. Whee! So I guess I'm not really technically slope soaring yet, but uh, and the little picture on seems uh, a bit twitchy, certainly in my hands. Oh, poor picture on. Oh, off slope. <laughs> Probably better. Maybe it's too turbulent for the little guy. Uh, definitely last time now. I think we'll call that a day, but uh, <laughs> at least the thing flies, and I think I need to find a gentler place to fly. Thanks for watching.